Hey guys, um, today I am going to be showing you how to conduct some research using the databases that we have access to as a school. Um, and we're just going to go through this. Um, I'm going to be showing you sort of like how to expand your research and narrow your research. Um, you have by now chosen your topic. I'm kind of assuming that most people are going to want to write about coronavirus right now. Um, some people, though, you're going to want to avoid that. Whatever is best for your anxiety level. I'm the type of person that the more information I have, the better I feel about something. So I've been reading nonstop about this. But at a certain point, I stopped um, like scrolling through feeds. Like I'm not on Instagram or Facebook all that much right now because I don't want to hear sort of what my friends are saying about it. I want to hear what experts and... Uh, you know, people in authority are saying about it and then kind of weigh that information. So that was my um, thinking behind creating this assignment. But again, if you do not want to write about Corona and you want to write about some other issue, uh, any other argumentative issue that you would rather write about, then go for it. Um, what I what I ask for that, though, is that you have found a way to narrow it down enough that you would be able to actually write a three to four page paper, because these are pretty short, three to four pages on that topic. So it cannot be, should we make marijuana legal or should we have a death penalty or not? Like, that is the subject of giant tomes, right? Giant books. Um, but thinking about this in a really narrow scope, should my parents, you know, let me have a curfew past midnight or something, that's going to be a little bit more easy. Okay, so let's get back to research here. The first website that you want to go to is the Herman Library Media Weebly. So while you are watching me... I think it'd be good to do this along with me if possible. Maybe you could have me on your phone and then be researching on your computer or vice versa. I don't know. Um, or just kind of pause me and, and go through this. But go to the Herman High Weebly because this is how we're going to access our research resources. Also, I'd just like to point out, if you're bored, you have access to a digital library for free. And it's got some really good stuff on there. So that's the Royal Library. But let's go to Research Resources. When you get to this list, um, the ones that we're going to be really focusing on are Utah's Online Library and EBSCO. The rest of these are great resources for you, um, including any other news sites that you have access to. Um, certain news sites will limit you at a certain point, like you can read three articles from New York Times a month or something like that if you don't have a subscription. But what's nice about these topics, if you are writing about Corona, is that most newspapers right now have made their corona updates free. So all of the writing that they have on coronavirus is um, available to you. So use those more current news sites definitely in your research. But for now, let's look at how to use these sources. Okay, so I wanted to show you the login for this, but I think... All right. Well, uh, I don't have I don't have the login anymore because it's automatic me automatically logs me in. But I you saw I just took a screen grab of the um, login information. I will post that on Canvas. But basically, you will see a screen that says, "Are you a student or an educator? You are a student, just so you know." And you put in login online password school all lowercase like that, and you will get to this page. And here we've got, I think, two very good resources for you to look at. The first one I might go to is the Gale Reference Collection. Go to the high school one because all of these have, um, what are they called, uh, blocks on them. So it's, it's very frustrating. But you go here and there are a bunch of different, basically it's access to encyclopedias. So if I go to like Gale in Context Global Issues, for example, and I open that up, you'll see on the first page, oh, it changed. The first page used to be COVID because that is what everyone is interested in right now. But let's say we do this. COVID-19 and you get a whole bunch of resources here. Here you've got a resource to the New York Times article and you can look up how it is not true that only old people die of COVID-19. Um, I actually think that when I was in here before, 
I might have been in their science section. Yes, Gale in Context Science, I went to here. There it is. And so right on the front page, we've got our topic of interest. You can explore this topic. You can read more about this topic and you will have access to so much information about these topics. And you can trust that Gail is only pulling stuff that um, you will, that will be considered reliable, and we'll talk about that in a different video. But you can see how they also give you um, a all of these different references. So like here's a reference to another um, online collection thing, but here's the Washington Post, here's an encyclopedia reference. It has, it has connections to a bunch of of, um, journals and to newspaper articles and those are going to be fairly reliable right it also has some magazines and you can kind of look through now you can conduct basic searches here or you can do advanced searches so let's say I am interested in Spanish flu and oh, and I am interested in quarantine efforts during the Spanish flu because I want to see sort of what was effective, what wasn't. I get one. Okay, not my favorite resource. So then I'm going to go, so that's Gale. You can check out all the stuff on Gale. And I am assuming at this point you've used Gale because all of the 10th grade teachers told me that in 10th grade you learn how to use that database. So if you didn't, I'm sorry, they totally lied to me. <laughs> Or maybe you just weren't there that day, um, but you can use that Gale reference for that. Just make sure you go to high school because they are going to block a lot for the elementary and middle schools. Okay, but the thing that you will most often use in college are these more complicated databases or these databases that have access to far more information. So what I will go to here is Academic Search Premier. Wait, let me slow down. So first you go to EBSCO High School. And then you go to Academic Search Premier. That is going to be one of the more useful searches for you in terms of finding very credible information from um, databases. So the other thing is that this basic search bar is fine. Like, let's do Spanish flu for this. It's fine, but I get 302 results, and I am not necessarily wanting to go through all of these, especially when it looks like some of them are going to be in other languages, right? So instead, I would always suggest going to the advanced search on these databases, and that is in all databases, try the advanced search. Okay, so I'm going to say Spanish flu. I want that one. But I also want to catch any of the other terms that is called 1918 influenza pan pandemic or um, 1918 flu. Okay, now I'm gonna search to see how many results that I get from that. Okay, more, because I have this greater this greater area to search from, right? Some people might refer to it as the Spanish flu. Some people might refer to it as the 1918 flu. And this way I can make sure that I get the best information about all of these. Okay, so, no, oh, I should have just left that. Okay, Spanish flu, epidemic of 18. What did we do? We did Spanish flu. We did 1918 influenza, and we did 1918 flu. Ah, there we go. Okay, the other thing is you can add search terms to this, right? So I had or here because I want to make sure that I get Spanish flu, but if they don't use the term Spanish flu, I want to, the database to also look for 1918 influenza pandemic or this other one. Okay, the other thing though is sometimes you're going to want to narrow your search, right? So I'm going to go to uh, quarantine with all of these terms. And this time I used and because I want to use this catch-all term here and then I want to narrow it down and look for just quarantine. The other thing is that we are, um, our school has access to a lot of stuff, but 
not everything. So something that's going to help save you some frustration is to go over here and click full text because you want to see the things that you can actually see. It's frustrating to see an article there that you're like, that would be perfect for me, but you don't have access to it. And in a university setting, you would sign up for interlibrary loan and you would get access and it would be fine. But for a high school paper, especially when we are learning online and struggling through this, don't bother. So find full text. And now I've got 451. And let's just go into, yikes, a year of terror and a century of reflection. Well, it sounds interesting. Sounds scary, but sounds interesting. So let's go there. Okay, this was from February 6, 2019. So we know that this is not going to be about Corona, which is fine because I am just going to be, I, what I'm trying to do right now, the reason I'm looking for Spanish flu is because I'm imagining there's this scenario where you might be making a resemblance claim where you're comparing Spanish flu to the coronavirus outbreak, right? So here I look at this information, and this is important not to just skip through. This comes from an infectious diseases journal. This is an academic journal. Um, watch my video um, about reliable sources to get to understand why that's important. Um, it's from this date, so it's fairly up to date, which is great. It includes a diagram and two maps. Um, it's also about 10 pages, which is totally doable. Some of these journal articles can be like 30, 40 pages, and you don't necessarily want to get into that, right? Um, the other thing that is really, really helpful here is looking at the subject terms and the author supplied keywords. These are the terms that you can use to find the information that you need. In this first stage of research, we're doing a lot of exploration. We don't know exactly what terms you're gonna want to use. Like you saw, flu, pandemic, outbreak, quarantine, like there's all these different terms that we're gonna have to look for. And here we see that these ones in bold are the subject terms that this most applies to. The other thing that's useful for you is the abstract. In the spring of 1918, the war to end all wars, which would ultimately claim more than 37 million lives, had entered into its final year and would change the global political and economic landscape forever. At the same time, a new global threat was emerging and would become one of the most devastating global health crises in recorded history. The 1918 H1N1 pandemic virus spread across Europe. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see here. We reflect on the pandemic, including its emergence and subsequent rapid global spread. In addition, we discuss the pathophysiology associated with it and its predilection for the young and healthy. So, and um, finally, our level of preparedness for future pandemics. This sounds right up our alley, actually, if we are searching um, for a resemblance argument to give a little bit of background on coronavirus. So what I'm going to do now is I, this is the way I do it to save it for myself. I send it to my email. Um, there are also, there are, the biggest mistake I see students making is taking that, copy and pasting it, and thinking that they have saved this article, and then they can't find the article anymore. So don't do that. Instead, email it to yourself. Give it a subject line. Um, comparison to 1918 flu. If you want to, you can give yourself a little bit more information. I am going to give myself this citation in MLA and I'm going to send it. Let's make sure it's there. Oh. There it is. And what's useful here is it gives us a link. We can get back to it if we're signed in. If you're not logged in, um, when you try and get back to it, it's gonna say you don't have access. All you have to do is go back and log in. But you look here and it also gives you the citation. So now you know you can just take that title, put it back into EBSCO and you're going to find it again. And because this one was in HTML, it sent it to me. You also often have the op uh, option of downloading the PDF, which since you guys are at home, might be a better option for you.